Hello, friends. I hope you're out wandering through nature, exploring the natural world around you. Do you enjoy writing about your wanderings? Nature journaling is an awesome, fun way to remember all the adventures you have taken and how you felt during those journeys. If you're looking for some beautiful journals to keep track of all your wanderings, I have several available on Amazon, including some guided journals for children. Start your journey in journaling by clicking on the link in the show notes. Keep exploring the nature around you and keep journaling all your wanderings. Hello friends, this is Paul and of course this is the Nature Wander Podcast and today I am back at Majors Park. Last week I came here to do an episode and I just love this park so much. It's so peaceful in the morning, um, so quiet, not a lot of people here at this time of day in the middle of the week. So I decided to come back and do another episode with you here. So today um, I want to talk a little bit about health. Okay, it's a topic that I'm really interested in. I'm always doing research on it, how nature heals people. Um, I've been reading some books recently. One was um, on forest bathing, and I don't mean stripping down naked and jumping into a bathtub or a, a stream or a pond in the middle of the forest. No, forest bathing is basically immersing yourself into the forest. Uh, but I, I'm actually going to do an entire episode on that in the future this summer, so I'm not going to get into it too much. But I'm also in the middle of a book, I should say further than the middle, I'm almost done reading it. It's just so fascinating, I can't put it down. Um, in reading this book, I'm almost done with, it's called The Nature Fix. And the author is Florence Williams. So if you have never read it before, um, I highly encourage you picking up a copy and reading it. It's just so fascinating. Um, And this is the sort of stuff I really enjoy learning about. And this kind of backs up a lot of what I'm always kind of talking about maybe not on the podcast but with other people once in a while I do bring it up on the podcast on how nature heals and that's what this book is about it's you know talking about how nature heals people and it also keeps you healthy so there's kind of two aspects to the whole thing Um, healing when you're sick and keeping you healthy so that you don't get sick. And nature actually has the power to do both of these things. And most people don't realize that, but it does. And you're probably thinking, oh, Paul, you're crazy. Well, there's a lot of studies that have been done, and I'll talk a little bit about some of them in this episode, but there's been a lot of studies that have been done about the healing properties of connecting with nature and that's the key connecting you see when we started to i always hate this term modernize i don't know i think we're kind of going into the wrong direction sometimes but uh, we have made our lives easier with computers with electronics with Uh, machines and we have modernized we have basically pulled ourselves away from nature a lot of times not everyone I mean not all the time but I know a lot of people who their idea of getting out in nature is watching some movie on TV or documentary on TV about nature not actually delving in nature or maybe it's just to walk through the woods Um, And I should clarify, walk, hike, there is a difference, okay? Hiking, you're usually, what hiking means is to just go out and just keep going. You know, see how far you can go in, you know, as little time as possible. But 
I like walking in nature, and I use the terms interchangeably a lot, but I like walking in nature where you can actually delve into nature. And it's always been something I've been interested in. I have done research on it and done some reading about it, and but I've never really delved into it deeply except for more recently. In the last several years, I have looked deeper into, you know, how nature heals. Um, you may not know it, but I have done courses on homeopathy many years ago, which is basically dealing with the energy from nature and letting that energy work to heal us and our energy. So this energy of healing um, comes from nature and it helps us to stay healthy or to get healthy. So I'm not going to get into depth with homeopathy. Um, look it up if you're interested in it. I've also been trained in um, Reiki, healing touch. And once again, nature's energy. And we have lost that connection with nature. And if we get that connection back, you will find that, you know, nature will help you to stay healthy and help you heal. Um, so some of the studies that have proven this, so that you're not thinking that, yeah, Paul's really gone off on a tangent. But what I want to talk about is, you know, actual studies proof that nature does help us to stay healthy. I mean, nowadays, all you hear about is mental health issue with people. Um, talking about how people have higher anxiety. People have a lot of stress in their lives. And I mean, we have brought that upon ourselves by this modern world. And we make, make it so that we do too much. We have way too many things going on. I mean, how many things are on your plate today? Um, I, I was sitting there the other day trying to meditate, and it's like I had so much on my mind. I kept drawing myself back to my meditation, but it kept wandering. So I finally just said, no, there's way too much up there. i got to get some of it out of there so I can meditate. Uh, and same thing last night. There goes a crow flying over saying hello to me. Hello, crow. Um, last night, I actually got out of bed and, you know, went on my computer for a little while because I was just laying there with so much going through my head. And it's like, I got to get it out of my head and onto the computer, you know, get it out on paper so I can get some sleep. And after I did that, I went back to bed and fell right to sleep. But they have shown that a lot of, you know, these stresses can be taken care of with nature. Um, they did a lot of studies, and um, one of the studies that they did actually came up with a number. Because everyone's wondering, how long do you have to spend in nature before it really helps? And, you know, some studies are saying, oh, even 30 minutes outdoors. Or they're just saying, you know, two hours outdoors. You know, that's all you need for you to start getting the effects of nature. Whether it's, you know, um, making you feel happier, clearing your head, physical health. You know, just getting out there. It doesn't mean you have to go hiking. You don't have to go for a walk. You know, that helps, but it's just getting out of nature. Um, but the one study I saw said 120 minutes. So two hours a week will help with your health and well-being. Um, it helps with mental health. It helps with physical health. So if you can get two hours outdoors in nature, you know, that's, that's enough to actually get you healthier physically and mentally and to keep you that way too. So I'm encouraging you, get outdoors. Um, one study that I was reading about and I did a little more research on was that they were studying people in hospitals. They found that people who are in a hospital 
who have maybe like a double room and the person next to the window who gets to see nature outside, they actually heal quicker. Their hospital stays are shorter than the people who are away from the window or maybe don't have a window in their room. Or here's another thing. If the window is facing another building, maybe you're in the middle of the city at this hospital, and the window is facing the building next door to the hospital, you know, it, that's not really seeing nature. It's not, you know, immersing in nature. But those people would take longer to heal. They'd have a longer stay in the hospital. So, I mean, these studies are, you know, showing that connection with nature. It's not just being out of nature, but seeing nature. And I have heard of other studies that have shown it with someone just sitting indoors looking at pictures of nature. And they found that, you know, these people looking at these pictures have actually had lower, well, I shouldn't say lower blood pressure. Their blood pressure has lowered after seeing these scenes of nature, these nature pictures, or hearing nature sounds. So not even just being in nature, but you know, the thought of being in nature. And they're still researching it to see what it is that's actually helping, what's affecting us. Is it the sounds? Like the birds I'm hearing right now calling? Is it the, um, the, the sense, the, the, what you're smelling? They have done a study that showed that um, pine, smelling different um, conifers, you know, actually will help with the healing process. Um, they, they have done studies that have shown that. So maybe you want to put a um, non-chemical air purifier, use essential oils, um, maybe get a, um, I don't know, I can't remember, a diffuser, you know, get an oil diffuser that smells like you know, pine in your house, and that will help too, you know, so these are all studies that they have done that have found that it does help. Um, they, they even did some studies at schools, and they found that students in a room with windows out to the playground or out to nature, out to trees that the kids could see, you know, they actually get better grades. They are advancing um, academically faster than the students who are in rooms without windows. I substitute teach at a middle school and as soon as I get into a classroom that I'm subbing in, uh, the shades are, you know, they're opening. You know, <laughs> sometimes in the morning the kids are like, oh it's too bright, you know, close the shade. It's like, no, I want you to see nature. I want you to do well. Um, because studies have shown that. I hate when I study in, or I substitute teach in a room where there are no windows. I'm in the middle of the building and there's no windows. It's just walls. And it's like, oh, it drives me crazy. It's like, as soon as the day's over, it's like, I want to go for a walk. <laughs> I got to get out of there. Another study in a city, because they were thinking, you know, it's like, well, people in cities don't have much of a chance to get out of nature. So how is this affecting them? And they have done studies in cities. Um, they did, I read about one that they did at an apartment building. I think it was mentioned in the book I'm reading. Uh, remember, The Nature Fix by Florence Williams. And this study, they were um, basically doing tests with people and seeing, are the people whose apartments are facing the playground in the middle of the complex, you know, are they happier and doing better health-wise than the people who their apartments are facing out towards other apartments or other buildings or the city, you know, so I guess there was a courtyard in the middle of this, and they found that the people who had access to that courtyard, even if it wasn't just windows, but they spent time in the courtyard, they did better socially. I mean, they were actually in this green space, socializing with others in the green space. And it made them happier, healthier. Um, the, the children had better grades in school. 
So it actually helped them out. They were more productive in their lives as well. So all of these things are because they had access to nature, getting out in nature. So it's really interesting. I just got back from Puerto Rico a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely loved it down there. Um, in the 80s every day, 70s in the evening. It was just so enjoyable. And I'm not a beach person, and a lot of it was a lot of it was beach there. You know, we stayed in Rincon. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. We stayed at Rincon, which is a surfing village, and we spent some time there. But we also went over to the rainforest. Um, there is the El Jonque, the El Jonque uh, National Forest. It is the only rainforest in a U.S. territory. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Um, I, there are rainforests in, in Washington and out west, um, and there is actually one in the Adirondacks, but those are, are temperate rainforests. This is the only tropical rainforest, and I've had on my bucket list since I was young. Um, I want to go to the, the tropical rainforest. You know, I, I just had some fascination with that. So this was a treat for me. First time, took all these years, first time that I actually had the chance to go to a tropical rainforest. So that's off my bucket list finally. Doesn't mean I'm done. I'm going back. <laughs> Absolutely loved it there. But my wife and I, we went to this rainforest. And at first we were just wandering through the rainforest. And we... Um, Went to the touristy spots. You know, oh, here's a waterfall, short trail going up to that waterfall. And, you know, saw the waterfall, absolutely beautiful. Went to this tower that they have, um, climbed to the top of the tower where you could see all around you. And then we went up further and we found this parking spot for this trail. And this trail was going to take us all the way up to a lookout. Now, I did read that the lookout was closed, um, but we decided, well, let's see how far we can go. So we started going up this trail, and part of it was um, through the forest, which is just, oh, it just blew me away. I just absolutely loved it. And then you got to this road, and you started walking up the road, and, and there's this trail that goes up to this lookout, and it's like closed. Yeah, closed for repairs. Remember, hurricane went through. Puerto Rico not too long ago and it wiped out a lot of stuff did damage to the park uh, so they're still working on roads we passed some road construction on the park road uh, so they are fixing up a lot of trails we actually passed some surveyors a couple of times uh, so all of these things were because the um, hurricane went through so that was closed, and we looked at the sign, and there's another trail uh, where you follow the road, and it's a, it's a regular road, paved road, going up, and it's like I'm looking at the map on my phone. Uh, luckily, I have all these mapping apps on my phone, uh, so I can actually see where some of the trails are. Not all the trails were on there, but a lot of them were. And it's like, well, I'd really like to go up there, but I really want to go up there, but do we really want to follow this road um, going up this hill and it's like I want to be on a trail you know in the forest so I saw this other trail that took us you know a little bit further and it's like well why don't we go down here see you know what's down here we'll go a little ways I know it's another two miles um, but you know we don't have to do the whole thing we've already hiked quite a few miles and so we start heading down this trail, and it's like you just got immersed into the forest. And by immersed, I'm like, you just... I mean, me, when I'm doing some of these hikes, my 
brain takes over and starts thinking about things around me or my wife and I will start talking about something and we just start walking along and and she's trying to keep up with me because um, I've got long legs and you know I walk faster than her but it's like we got in there and it's like all of a sudden I just started slowing down you know I I just started walking slower I started noticing more and this is what forest bathing is all about, too, is starting to, you know, stopping to actually get a connection with the forest. Get a connection between you and the trees, between you and nature. Listen to the sounds. Listen to the sounds around you. You didn't hear any cars there. I mean, right now I'm almost back to the parking lot, and I'm hearing cars on the road. And... There, no, there were no cars. And we ran across someone, you know, coming down the trail every once in a while. Uh, one rude person who, you know, younger kids with, they had a radio going. It's like, no, that's not getting in nature. Come on, turn the darn radio off. Uh, but anyhow, after they pass, it's like, it's just like so peaceful. You had just trees all around you. And I started noticing, you know, little ripples, waterfalls coming down off of the rocks to my side. You know, you look over on the other side of the trail and you can see how it goes down the hill and you can see the canopy. And we just kept walking. It didn't matter how long it took us. You know, we just kept walking. And we did it slowly and we would stop every once in a while. And it's just, I had to not just look and listen and I started touching the trees and it's almost like you know I was becoming part of the forest and you know it just made me feel so connected with it and you're going to think I'm crazy here when I say this but the whole experience of this I actually started getting emotional I, I could almost feel tears coming you know it just was so joyful and relaxing and I could feel myself breathing you know I did take some deep breaths and just to take all this in take in all this fresh air and I mean it was just very emotional and it would also uh, it, I just felt so relaxed there it wasn't like I was in a hurry to get to a tourist site. No, I was just relaxed and I was there. I was in where I wanted to be. And my wife, she actually bent over to pick up a, a leaf that was on the ground because, you know, it really intrigued her. And when she stood up, you know, she, I could tell she, you know, got a little lightheaded. And it's like, yeah, her blood pressure was going down. Um, I mean, she doesn't have low blood pressure. And so her, I have low blood pressure. Um, I got to be careful when I stand up, but you know, her blood pressure had actually dropped. I mean, we didn't have a, a blood pressure monitor with us, but if we did and we took it before the hike and at that point during the hike, I can guarantee that her blood pressure went down quite a bit. But just her standing up and getting lightheaded that doesn't happen very often with her. So I knew her blood pressure had dropped. And she even said, you know, how much more relaxed she felt too. So this is what I mean. You immerse yourself in the forest. Now we continued on and we got to the point where there's a staircase that went straight up, um, quite a long staircase. And we went up the staircase. And at the top, there was this area level air, leveled off area they unfortunately concreted it and they had a wall a stone wall going around so that no one you know fell off but you're basically at the peak of this mountain and when i was looking around i mean we've probably spent a good half hour there i could have spent longer but um and the nice thing is when we got there there's a group of people there and they were chatty and noisy but they left and we had the place to ourselves. It was just my wife and I. And we just looked. I mean, we were in silence for quite a while. And we just looked out 
and we were so high up. I mean, there's another peak that we could see um, off to the one side, and we could see a lookout, you know, up there too, which is probably where that road went if we had taken the road. But most of the hills were down below us, and a breeze, very light breeze, came through, and that breeze actually brought these clouds in, and the clouds just hid the entire forest. Um, it, look up the term cloud forest. Okay, I'm not going to get into too much detail about it, but we were basically in a cloud forest at that point. And, you know, then it would go away and you could see all the forest again. And you could just feel how relaxed it was. You could hear the birds calling, um, the plants around us. I mean, everything was just so alive it was like it was part of us and it just helped you know it really helped and they say that this feeling of nature you know relaxing you lowering your blood pressure um, all of that feeling you know will stay with you the health benefits of being out in nature stays with you for, um, you know, different studies have said different things, but on average about um, four to seven days. Sometimes it's longer, depending on how much time you spent in nature. So the longer you spend in nature, the more benefits you get. Sometimes it's, you know, not as long. Um, they have done studies where sent someone out in nature and their blood pressure drops and, all, and then they stick them back in an office somewhere uh, with the pressures of work and it's like, yeah, that's not going to do it. <laughs> you know? uh, or with me, it would be, out in nature and then I get behind the car and have to deal with drivers. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a very stressful driver. I don't like driving. I hate being around other people on the road. Um, but so here's what I want you to do. I'm encouraging you. Get that experience like I did. I mean, that was, I've had experiences similar, but being in that rainforest, I don't think I've ever had that much emotion come about me being out in a, you know, a setting like that before. It was just so strong. I could feel the connection, the energy between me and the trees and, you know, the nature around me. And I want you to have that same thing. I mean, we, we are a society that has, you know, depended so much on modern health care um, instead of going the natural way that we forget about these things like nature healing us. And I want to encourage you to get back to that. Get out and explore. If you can spend two hours a week in nature, hopefully longer, hopefully more. I try to get out every day in nature, but um, get out and explore nature as often as you can and reap the benefits. You know, less time in the hospital, less medications to take. Um, it's going to help. Trust me, it's going to help you. So anyhow, uh, that's all I want to say about this. There, I'll leave some links to some very interesting um, websites on how nature heals. But just experience it for yourself. Don't trust what others are saying about it. Um, get that book, um, The Nature Fix. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at um, any of the bookstores locally, I hope. And... I don't know if there's a digital copy. I haven't looked at it. I, I like having a paper, actual book in my hands when I read. Just something strange about the way I am. But uh, anyhow, don't forget, invite some friends along. Rate and review, especially if you enjoyed the podcast. If you ever have questions about anything I talked about or ideas for future episodes, please, please, please drop me an email. Let me know. This podcast is for you guys. So I want to talk about what you're interested in hearing. So um, let me know what you want to hear. Drop me uh, a DM. Um, send me a text. Send me an email. Um, get in touch with me somehow. Let me know what you want to hear. 
and any any links you're interested in, go to the show notes. I have more information in the show notes. Um, ways to support the podcast are in the show notes. But above all, I mean, get out and explore the nature around you and keep exploring the nature around you. Have a great day, everyone. Did you know that plastic is made with oil, a fossil fuel that pollutes the environment? And did you know that only about 15% of all plastic is recycled into new products? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could live our lives without plastic so that we could stop harming the planet? Well, there's a company that wants to help you do just that. Life Without Plastic sells products that will reduce or eliminate your dependence on plastic. They have a large selection from toothbrushes to food storage containers to drinking straws, all plastic-free. And it's reasonably priced. So what are you waiting for? Check out all these great plastic-free products and help save the planet. Just click on the link in the show notes to find out more and to start your journey to being plastic-free.